colleague, space journalist Dr. Ken Kramer, joins us now from Florida. Ken, morning to you. Thank you. It's, well, it's night time for you, so thank you very much for staying up so late to talk to us. Um, how much of a blow is this latest postponement? Well, you know, it is a disappointment, but they have to be safe. So, you know, we don't want to have a disaster. We don't want to rush into a disaster. So they have to be safe. So they did absolutely the right thing to delay it. You know, they had hope they had fixed the, all those hydrogen leaks, but as it turned out, they didn't. And so we'll just have to proceed uh, from there. And for sure, I, I'm certain it's not going to happen until the middle of October. Nonetheless, Ken, with all the expertise, all the money that's being ploughed into this, it does seem a little bit surprising that these issues are coming up now. Will NASA admit a, an element of disappointment to, to, to all these disruptions? Well, yeah, they did. They said that. It's certainly a disappointment. But, you know, as I just said, if we have a disaster, uh, that's much worse. You know, a, a, a delay of a few days or a few weeks, nobody will care about that a year from now. But if the rocket fails, that'll be the end of the program, most likely. So they have to do everything they can to ensure its success. Um, and hopefully they'll, 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 they'll be able to fix it. But it's, it's, it's an insidious leak. It's very hard to detect these hydrogen leaks. The problem is you can only detect them at cryogenic temperatures, means at minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit when you're actually flowing liquid hydrogen through the fuel lines. You can't detect that at, at room temperature, at ambient temperature. So they can check it all they want. But until we actually cool it, uh, you don't know if the leak is there. And the way they've been doing that so far is during launch attempts. Now, hopefully then they'll be able to figure out a different way. Maybe they can do a partial fueling test, see if that seal is seated and then proceed from the launch there maybe a, a few days later. That's some alternative that they're looking at today that uh, that actually asked about at the, at the briefing this afternoon. The objective of this program is to ultimately put people on the moon uh, in a few years' time again. What's the knock-on of this? Is it is it such a delay now that it's likely to push the whole program back or, or are they st have they still got a bit of wiggle room in terms of timing? Oh, yeah, that, a delay in this launch of just a, a couple of weeks, maybe even a few months, that's not going to really impact the uh, the next missions because the crew flight, <clears throat> sorry, the crew flight isn't scheduled for two years from now. So they could probably launch this, you know, six months from now and it wouldn't really impact the timeline. And then the, the lunar landing flight with the first woman and the first person of color that's set for 2025 or 2026. So, I mean, it's a good question. If it was like Apollo, where we were launching every three or four months, then yeah, a delay here would have an impact. But 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 this delay, since it's a, a bit of time before we get to the next launch, it really won't have much of an impact. Now, they do have to recover the Orion capsule at the end of this mission, which will be about you know five, six, seven weeks. Uh, because there are components in there they want to reuse in, in the Orion 2 capsule on the next mission. And if they don't make that October window, Ken, what happens after that? If it's found that the complex, sorry, the, the issue is more complex, more involved, are we looking into the new year? Uh, there, are, there are launch periods about two weeks on and two weeks off. So if they don't make the mid-October to late-October window, there's another window in November. There's another window in December. So, no, it doesn't mean next year. It just means about a month later. So they're going to roll it back to the VAB, do a little bit of work. Well, do whatever work they need, actually. Fix it, then they'll roll back out. That whole process, rolling it into the VAB, doing the repair work, and then rolling it back out to the launch pad is four to six weeks. That's why it's really not possible to launch any time before the middle of October. Plus, NASA has a crew flight to the International Space Station scheduled for around October 3rd, and that they really want to go forward. So they can't really launch SLS in, in, the, in the early October time frame. Dr. Ken Kramer, thanks so much for talking to us this morning. We're really grateful to you. Thank you. Well, really, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to work with you.